Hello and welcome to today's podcast. I'm Susan Guthrie, your host, and Lisa Kosky, my friend, is joining us today. And she's going to be talking to us, as I said in the intro, about mediation, but also, you know, a new twist on it, something that I was just telling her I can't wait to talk about because um, I think so many people during divorce feel powerless. And Lisa has a message for you that there's, you have at all times, you have a lot of power um, in yourself to change the direction of how things are going. So first off, Lisa, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Susan, I am so honored to be here and so thankful, honestly, um, the gratitude that I feel, and you know, I'm not going to gush all over you, but you have been instrumental in me becoming who I am and doing this mediation. You know, those years ago when I dinged you on Instagram and you responded right away, um, means the world to me. So I just, it's a dream come true to be sitting in my barn talking to you. Yeah. Well, I'm thrilled. And for all, everyone who's not watching the video, Lisa is literally sitting in her barn. Yes. Um, that's where she has her beautiful office set up. And you've got that gorgeous barn door behind you, which I always love to see. And I think there's a horse, a beautiful horse on the wall yes. um, because you are on a farm right now. <laughs> I am. Yes. All the glorious, you know, it's one of the blessings of COVID. Truly, to be able to be here. And there really is a horse and a donkey behind me. So if they make noise, it'll, it will get a kick out of it. Yes, I was going to say, people are used to, since I'm in Chicago, they're used to like sirens going off in the <laughs> background or my dogs barking at one right. of the neighbors. I don't know that they've heard a donkey in the background up to now, but that yep. would be lo welcome and lovely. So. <laughs> okay, good. So I, you know, you have been, um, as many of my experts, you have a long history, a long career in the law. You are an attorney and, um, both family law and elder law. Um, so I'm going to dive into the elder law cause I just want to get a little flavor of what that is. Um, but tell us, you know, you've really moved into the world of mediation. Um, and I know from our talking, that's really what you do these days. You just do a mediative practice. You're not litigating um, anymore. So, you know, tell the list, my listeners, you know, how you came to become a mediator and why you're so passionate about it. Yeah, I would love to share that story. And um, in some ways, it's kind of a funny story, but it's been like my whole life. Um, I think I kind of spent it trying to be what everyone wanted to be. And um, I got to a point where I had two grown children and my youngest was in school and I um, was starting to think, what do I really want to do with my life? And I actually was homeschooling her for one semester, which I like all the people who do that, that is amazing. My daughter said, no child should have to be homeschooled by me. But it was kind of the point where I went and I sat and I did a bunch of research and I went, what am I doing? I am a mediator. I have been mediating my entire life. It is um, such a natural aspect of my being. And so like when you can figure out how to add value to this world and use your gifts, it doesn't mean that it's easy, but it has, it just like, carried me away and I became so passionate and I kind of um so so since about 2017 it's all I just made the decision this is all I'm going to do and everybody said you can't do it you have to practice law too and I decided not to listen and just do it and I have such a unique practice where I have a lot of people coming to me who maybe come to me before they even hire attorneys and want to work together on their paperwork so I'm blessed with great clients, you know, that seem to want, I don't, I do have some high conflict cases. I do work with attorneys too. Um, but the most of my clients are married couples. And what's so interesting is I have been married for 30 years in February. <laughs> so, you know, I always felt like I had to apologize, like, oh, I haven't been through this because everybody who does this has the experience of going through it, which is beneficial. 
But then I started thinking, what value I want to help my clients because I just fall in love with them when I'm working with them. I want to help them so that when they get through this on the other side, they're not back in this position again. I want to teach them how to have a better life after their divorce. And it, you know, just going through a mediation is, I think it's just integrity, you know, it's just doing it a better way. Um, so that's a step in the right direction. But recently I've just taken it a little bit further and started just charging a flat fee and actually coaching my clients as well as mediating with them. Yeah. And that's the part I'm really excited to talk about because you've, you've added a new twist sort of to the mediation paradigm for people. And it's focused on helping them in that beyond. And as everybody knows, that's what I'm passionate about, right? It's not the divorce. I want you to get through your divorce, but I really want people to thrive in the beyond and that little coaching at not little coaching aspect, but that twist um, of adding that coaching aspect. I think is, is what helps people in your practice to the beyond. But before we get to that, I want to go backwards um, because you said you've been mediating your whole life. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm pretty sure, you know, that doesn't mean that you set up like Lucy and (laughs) set up the five cents for psychiatry on the corner. Um, But what do you mean that you've been mediating your whole life? You know, it's so interesting. And you know, we'd have to really like lay on a couch and maybe dig up Freud and really get into this. And so I don't really know why, but as a child, I think I just always wanted everyone to be happy. That is who I am. And I would try to figure out how I could make them happy. And so I spent my life kind of studying people and what their wants are, what their needs are, which really isn't healthy, (laughs) you know, and I've learned and I've been coached. But it is a tool that when I sit down with my clients, I can, I really can, it's what I do. I can get in and really understand what their issues are and try to get at that so that they can come to a true agreement. And sometimes they don't even really know what their issues are. And so just getting them out helps. Well, I think that's a a critical point that you make there, Lisa, because so often people will come into the mediation process wanting an outcome without having any idea of the path that gets them there to an outcome, a finalization of all of this, and without really understanding what the issues are for them, right? They come in with a, in, in mediation, we always talk about positions. I want this, I need that. And they don't look at why I want this or why I need that. So that must be a part of what you work with people to do, to help them identify the underlying interests below those positions. Absolutely. And there is nothing more beautiful when, you know, I've had people where they're fighting about where their kids are going to go to school. Right. And they're, they've already gone through the divorce and they come back in and I get to the bottom of it and find out that mom can't get them to the other school because she can't drive. Dad hears that and just everything, there's like relief. You know, he just says, I didn't know that I can have my parents drive them. Problem solved. Very simple because we just got down to what is really the issue here. That's such a great example, because how many times do we actually see something so similar to that in a mediation practice or in a mediation session where two people are really on opposite sides or it appears they're really on opposite sides of something? No, they can't go to that school. Yes, they must go to that school. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that the, the solution it was always, I always say it's like the Dorothy paradigm, right? That you could yes. always go home by clicking your Ruby slippers, but yes. they need help getting underneath everything to find out. Yeah. So how do you help them dive underneath to get to those, you know, to realize that they're wearing the Ruby slippers? I know that's such a, that is such a good question. And Susan, I think, um, 
that is one of the skills that I've developed, but I think other people, it's just listening. It's just being interested and, you know, diving in. And, you know, it really, it's something that is, you know, unique about what I do, I think. But I think more than that, you know, if you want to talk about the self-coaching a little yeah. bit, um, that is a little bit different. And I am coached by a coach and, and have been working with her and thought, oh my goodness, if I could share all the things I'm learning, learning with my clients, they're going to have a better life. And so when you work with me, you might get a little video course, which I'm going to make um, available to your listeners about, you know, how to prepare. And that has steps that you can take so that you intentionally can go into a mediation because you do have the power to, you know, you can change your thoughts and you can change how you think about something that, and it actually will change your feelings. And if you can come into a mediation prepared and intentional, then we're going to get to what those issues are. But, you know, and I have to tell you something too, and I think I mentioned to this to you, one interesting thing that I'm doing that's brand new. And it's because my coach has been, you know, she's always like, what else can you do to bring value to people? How can you do this different? And I keep evaluating things. I actually have my first ever group divorce course coming up. And today is the last day to sign up. There's one, one spot left. And it's so interesting to me. It's a small group. Um, and it's something that I would have never been interested in probably because I was a person who just wanted to get things done on my own and not, you know, I, I remember I, when I went and got my master's, we had to work together as a group and I just wanted to barrel through and do it on my own. And then it was the first time where I went, wait a minute, all these things that these people are adding are teaching me. So I thought with this group class, you know, I've got people who have agreed to do it and, um, there's still going to be anonymity, but they can share, they're going to be in community with other people going through a divorce. There's going to be a mix. There's going to be some online courses. There are going to be as many one-on-ones with me as there are group, but it's so interesting because I think, and Susan, you probably find this, I learn so much from my clients and being able to do this exclusively has just opt all the creative ideas that I have because they always have the best ideas. And that was one thing I had to learn. I'm not here to fix it for them. My clients come up with the ideas. So now if we're in community, they're going to be able to hear ideas from other couples. Um, they can contact them and reach out. And they're, it's so cute. There's one couple where he kind of doesn't want to do it and she does and he's willing right. um but but there you know there's, there's a lot of people that think it sounds really therapeutic to go through this in community with others and community is important so I am so excited to be offering that to just trying to meet my clients needs well, because that's... they're all different yeah. And that's, what's so exciting about, uh, you know, I love what your coach said to you is how can you bring value to your clients? How can you do things differently? And in yes. fact, I want to mention to people doing divorce different is your podcast. Yes. Great name. And it's really, it, you're not just, you know, naming it, you're living it yes. by coming up with new ways to do divorce. And you've mentioned a few of these you know, innovative ideas that we want to highlight here, uh, which I just, you know, that's what I, at the very high level, what I want listeners to hear is that there is no set one way for yeah. people to get divorced. Right. And that's what you're doing is you're offering like all these different possibilities for people to choose what works for them. And that's what I think is so critical and exciting about what you're doing. I, I want to talk about the, you know, the coaching and the coaching lessons yes. that you do for people. So let's start with that. Um, sure. You know, when you talk about coaching lessons, um, I'm thinking of, you know, you hold the ball like this and you throw it in like that. I know <laughs> that's not what you're doing. So when you talk about doing coaching lessons with your mediation clients, what does that look like? So 
it's different in every situation, but it follows a five step process. And I can go over that quickly if that's yeah. something that would be helpful. So, and it's something, Susan, that I do every day. So um, you look at a circumstance and you make it neutral. And we could even say like a circumstance would be, I have a mediation, a mediation. Okay, you have a mediation coming up. So I'm just writing this down because I always do. So in the circumstance line, you write down mediation. And then there's a line for thoughts and a line for feelings. And it's hard to tell those apart sometimes, but I'm gonna start with feelings. So how are you feeling about that? So this is something I coach people on separately through a video before our first session. So maybe they're feeling afraid or anxious. And then you go, you look at what is the thought that's making you afraid or anxious. And maybe the thought is, um, I don't have the tools I need. I don't, you know, whatever it could be or lack of confidence. And if you can change that thought to something that's believable, you know, even as simple, simple as saying, it's quite possible, I have all the tools I need. When you do that, you just get some relief. And you know, Susan, I want my clients to come in. I know it's going to be emotional, but I want them to be able to be as unemotional as they can be because then they're going to be able to think clear. So you do, you do your unintentional model, which is what you're actually feeling and thinking. And then you look at what, so if you're feeling afraid and anxious because you don't have the self-confidence, you're going to show up nervous and afraid and you're not going to be honest. You're not going to say what you really need. And the result is going to be that you don't have the greatest mediation and you don't get what you need. So what I love to do is do another model that is my intentional model. And I actually sometimes start with my result line. I want to have an amazing mediation, right? Yeah. So then you can kind of work backwards. What do I need to think? And like I said, it needs to be a believable thought, but it's amazing. So that's how I started out. So people know when they're, you know, joining me, they're getting something a little different. Um, they have a lot of contact with me. Um, that's why I do the flat fee. I don't want people to be all nervous about, oh, I just talked to her for an hour. She's going to charge me more. I want to just carry them through this process. So, um, and it's just, it's been amazing. And then sometimes in the middle of it, we might stop and do this again. Or one client might say, go ahead and work with her on this issue. And it's just really simply that five-step process. I, I, that is such a beautiful idea for people because as much as we say to them, prepare to go into a mediation session, come prepared. Yeah. They don't even know what that means and you're helping them to prepare, but you're also, you know, one of my true beliefs is that awareness is the, the beginning step to everything, right? You, yes. if you're not aware of how you're thinking, feeling, yes. entering into a situation, then it's just going to be a self-fulfilling prophecy. So what you're really doing is helping people to identify those self-defeating thoughts, emotions, yes. and turn that around. I, I very critical. What you said, it has to be believable. It has yes. to be, I, you know, I'm going to go into mediation today and get everything I want <laughs> right. is not believable. Everyone, right. sorry to tell you, but I, you know, that self coaching and that you help your clients. So you give this to them in a video ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Before, wonderful. yeah. Before we even, we do the consult, then I send the video out. We have the you know, we go through the first mediation and then we work as we go. If we need more coaching, we do more coaching. If we just need to get to work, we just get to work. It's kind of it fit it for whatever works well for them. But I mean, my whole dream is that I don't, I mean, I know you feel this way too. It just truly can change the world. I mean, being able to work together. And Susan, I said that I have a lot of amazing clients that want to work together, but I've had clients that they came in and the guy picked the woman up from jail because she had punched him in the face the night before. And yeah. they come and sit down in front of me 
And they're so dedicated to wanting to figure it out that it still can work. Yeah. So I just feel like it's one little way that I can bring some peace to this world right now. And I just am so thankful for this opportunity. Well, and I, you know, I'm thankful that you're, you are innovating within our industry as someone who is a passionate um, innovator myself, you know, mine's more in that world of tech or, you know, what can we do to streamline the process, make it easier for people with technology, but also that technique and the skills that we bring to the table. There's so much there that we can be continually doing to take a process to make it work for each couple. And the other thing that, you know, I really want people to focus on what you've said here, because we've talked about self-coaching, right? You are helping people yes. work with themselves, yes. not manage yes. the other person. You stay in your own lane or so yes. they say. Yes, yes. And Susan, what is so, I mean, I have learned so much, even in my relationship with my husband. Uh, I mean, I can use, and what's so amazing is if you take care of yourself, it kind of takes care of that other, you do have power in that. And um, it can change, it can change the whole outcome. It really can. It's that, you know, the, the oxygen mask on the airplane thing, but it's the same. And we talk about that with respect to, you know, you have to do what's right for you so that you can help your kids in a mediation. You also have to take care of yourself so that you can come to the table and actually make progress, as you were saying earlier, yes. that you can identify the interests beyond behind the positions, that you can be creative yeah. and work with your, you know, your partner, whether they're your life partner anymore or not, they are still your partner in yes. resolving these issues, you know, and work together to come to a resolution. Um, so, you know, really what you've done is come up with a truly innovative way for people to help themselves through this process. So you are helping in a, in a, even beyond the, the scope of the mediation room. Um, but I want to talk also about the group coaching, because you talked about that as well earlier. Right. So let's dive in there just a little bit more, because how will that, if, if there's still anonymity for yep. people, how does that happen? Is it online? So it's a mix. So what we start with is they're, um, they've signed up and they've agreed. And so far, everyone is okay with not being anonymous. So that means when we do our group, we, they might see their name, but they're all going to have their own paperwork, right? They're all going to have be working on their own and that's not going to be shared at all. That would be totally wrong. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. Right. So, and I actually have, I think I have it written down how the schedule is going to go. And you know, this is the first time I've done this. So I'm going to learn and it could change, but the first session we are going to go through um, an asset and liability spreadsheet and everyone's going to have theirs and it's going to be all filled out. And then I'm going to talk to them about how they can, you know, decide on which asset goes where I'm going to walk them through that. I'll give them and you know, I can give them legal information. Yep. I can't give any legal advice. So, and this is in Minnesota. So I will give them legal information on how assets are separated, what might be non-marital. So I'll educate them all. And this will be kind of a group course. And then, um, then the week after that, we have one-on-one sessions so that they can ask me. I just felt like we needed those two. Um, um. So we're going to do some one-on-one and then the next week we're going to come back and we're going to go over child support and maintenance and they'll have the calculators, but, and then we'll have a one-on-one after that. And so on through the process, I actually have the timeline set up so that if they do want to file before the end of the year, they should be able to. Um, And that's what I like too, about this group. Sometimes I have clients there where they'll kind of fall off and, they were supposed to get a legal description and then they're gone or find out a value of a pension and it time can drag on. 
And yeah. I like that it'll keep, I mean, there's so much that I like about the idea coming from someone who never really liked to work in groups. Yeah. But I think too, Susan, that sometimes people are a little kinder and gentler and see other perspectives better. So it's going to be like a nice area to play. I think people are going to be able to communicate well when they're in this group and support each other, you know? So there's that little bit of therapeutic of being with other people. You're not alone. Yeah. Well, and isn't, isn't that really the core of, you know, we feel so isolated when we go through a traumatic experience like divorce. And one of the things I love about this concept is it brings the couple together in the process for, you know, hearing information, information gathering, educational moments, but then it puts them with others who are also going through the experience, which is not you know, not the, no, I don't know anyone else who's doing what you're doing and bravo to you. Um, and I, yeah, well, and, and, you know, this is how things change and this is, you know, this is how mediation started 30, 40 years ago. I talked to my business partner, Woody Mostyn, and, you know, it started out in his living room doing mediations with couples and sitting on his sofa, you know, I mean, (laughs) Now it takes place on a computer, or, I know. you know, in an office or in your barn, right. um, who knows? I know, I know. it's, you know, so when you're working in the, how many people are you limiting the group to? I, you know what? I'm only limiting, I'm limiting it to eight. So I, okay. so four couples, so not huge because I just felt, well, I want to be able to still kind of be in control and I didn't want it to get to be too much. So I kept it small. Yeah. But it's the type of thing that, you know, they can also, will they know each other since they haven't decided to be anonymous? So that is another, I'm glad you're bringing that up because that is something that I thought of. And so I don't know if you've ever seen the app Marco Polo. Yes. Yes. My sister-in-law introduced me to it. Yes. My coach introduced me to it. And it's a way that we can communicate if we want to. So that is an option for them. And they can opt in if they want to. So say there's people that want to share their experience with others in the group, it'll be a a place where they can. Um, Or they, I mean, they can do it in different ways. As long as everybody has permission to get the contact information, that's just something that I need to, you know, be clear on from each person involved. Yeah. Which I think is making things optional for people also means we have choice and right. people should always have choice. I mean, the one basic premise of mediation that my listeners have heard me uh, talk about numerous times and with my guests is mediation is 100% voluntary, right? Yes, I mean, it is. people think of it as, um, and actually somebody just said this to me the other day, well, isn't it what the court orders you to do before you can have a, a trial? And that's, That's true in some cases and in some states, you have to go Mm -hmm. to a mediation session or sessions before you can have, um, before you can have a trial or a hearing, but even in those, the coming to agreements, the, the ability to agree or not agree, the ability to put forth other options, the ability to brainstorm, the ability to compromise is always in the hands of the two people who are having the discussion, not the mediator. We don't make decisions for nope. people. Nope. And you know, I always like to tell people, even when they, I don't, I don't love when people are just doing it to check a box, like, well, the court said we have to do this. I have a little speech. I get on my soapbox <laughs> and I talk about how this is your opportunity to make the decision right now together and not worry about what it's going to be or, you know, or having someone else decide. So it is mediation is an opportunity. Yeah. Well, that goes right along with my divorce is an opportunity. I know. And I love that, (laughs) but I, 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 and I love it that you spun it around because mediation truly is that opportunity. Mm -hmm. Even if you're sitting in a room or on a computer with a mediator, because the judge told you, you had to. Yes. And by the way, people that 65% of the time when it's court ordered mediation is still successful. So, I mean, it's more than vastly more than 50% of the time people do, but it should be because you've decided that you would rather make decisions for yourself than have a stranger in a black robe, make those decisions for you. Exactly. 
you know, cause by the way, the other thing, um, you know, to just to go back and circle around to what Lisa and I were talking about in the beginning is in a courtroom, a judge may not dive underneath to find out that mom can't drive the kids to the school, right. but she doesn't really object to the school that may never come out mm -hmm. in the hearing. Um, and so, you know, misunderstandings will abound and people will feel coerced into doing something yeah. if the judge orders it. So you, you just by far have much better outcomes. And I suspect, you know, with the help, I, what I see you doing is giving people help with the self-coaching tips before and during the process. Yes. And then the group, you know, coaching aspect, you're giving them help and support from the beginning through the end, beyond just being their facilitator, mediator, advisor. You know, exactly. And I actually have a group. I'm glad you brought that up, Susan. I have a group myself. I get coached as a group and I get to watch other people be coached and I've learned so much. So that's where when you're in this community and you're watching other people be coached, it's going to help you too. So I'm so excited about it. And a little bit, I mean, it's a little bit of, I'm going to be learning so much too, because I get to have more than one client. I'm going to be learning from, so it's a little bit selfish too. This is going to be a big way for me to learn having more than one person. But I, that's, you know, that's the best way to learn. And that is the best way, you know, with four couples, what works for couple one may be vastly different for what right. couple two, three, and four are going to do, but that can help spark ideas for couples two, three, and four, exactly. even if it's not their solution. Yeah. So it's a beautiful idea. And, and you mentioned you're going to make the video available to listeners, the yes. self-coaching video. Can you tell us more about that? Cause I, I'm so excited. Yeah, it's a video. It's the video that I use that I send out to all my clients. And it's really just for any time you're going into a difficult conversation, but it's that four step. You can use it. Like I said, I use it every day for everything that I do. So I am so happy to share that with your listeners, Susan. Um, and I think I will have a coupon because it's a course, just, you know, a little course, but I will let your listeners have it free. No, oh, you're so kind to my listeners, <laughs> listeners. I know you're excited. So I'm going to, as always, that all that information will be in the show notes, but I want people to, who are just listening or aren't looking at the show notes or the video. Um, how can they get in touch with you? How can they find out more about everything we've talked about? Yeah, you know, the easiest way is to go to lisakoski.com and it's Lisa with an E. So L-E-S-A-K-O-S-K-I.com. That's where you'll see how to connect with me on social media. And, um, you know, you can sign up for my newsletter and however you want to connect with me, or you can just go right on the website and send a little consultation request and I will get it. And I would be happy to answer any questions that your listeners have. Well, I, I so appreciate your very generous gift and your sharing and your innovation for the field. You are a trailblazer. We need trailblazers in every industry, but especially those of us who are out here really trying to help people do divorce different, differently yes. in, in yes. different ways. Um, and that's the other thing. I will have a link to your podcast as well, doing divorce different. I was very excited to be a guest just a couple of, uh, about a month and a half ago. I so I will have a link to that episode as well. But Lisa, just truly thank you for all that you are doing. And thank you for coming on Divorce and Beyond to share it with my listeners. Susan, thank you for the opportunity. 